This passage is hard. There's no doubt about it. But uh, as always, we're going to try to do dumb summaries. We're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. We're not going to worry about all the little details. We're going to try to get the big picture and maybe turn it into some sort of math equation that captures the idea. That's, to me, what a good dumb summary looks like. So let me show you what I notice as I read, but it, it's hard. Some economists have attributed the increasing adoption of automation technology by firms in the United States in part to the productivity gains firms can achieve by automating tasks previously requiring paid labor. So uh, automation is about productivity. Darren Akamoglu et al. recently complicated this account. That is a fancy way of saying the other thing is wrong. Uh, by showing not only that automation's productivity gains are often unremarkable, so productivity unremarkable, but that there is a disparity in the U.S. tax code between automation technology and the labor it is nominally equivalent to. The tax code classifies automation-related technology as a depreciating asset, meaning that capital expenditures on that technology can reduce a firm's tax burden relative to its tax burden if equivalent expenditures were labor costs. Together, these findings suggest that. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's an insane sentence, and I know that like 2% of SAT test takers are going to understand that. It's okay. You don't need to understand it. Basically, it's about money, right? And so where's my dumb summary? This part here, there are some hard words, but there are some easy words that you need to be able to recognize. So my guess for what's going on here is that they're going to say that um, taxes or money, so taxes, money, is more important than productivity, right? Where am I getting that? Well, they started out by saying productivity is important, right? I, it, they've, it's based on the, the productivity. And then this Darren guy, or a girl, I don't even know, um, is saying, is complicating this account. So you got to look out for phrases like this in these passages that basically say what we used to think is wrong, what we used to think isn't the whole truth, there's some other evidence. All of that is a common thing you're going to see on the SAT. So you shouldn't be surprised when a passage is centered on that idea. That is extremely common. It's going to happen multiple times per SAT. So you got to be kind of on the lookout for that kind of stuff. So complicated this account is a fancy way of saying something is wrong with the productivity. So then they get into uh, saying, okay, they do say the productivity is unremarkable, meaning it's not great. It doesn't mean that it's completely wrong necessarily. It doesn't mean that it's it's going down. It just means that it's not as impressive as we thought. Um, but then they get into this whole thing about the taxes that I barely understand, but I get that they're saying that's more important, right? Look at how many words they use to describe it. Plus, we've already said that if productivity isn't really what this is about, kind of just follow the logic right there, right? It, it must be about something else. So the tax money thing is what it is. Let's see if that helps us with the choices. Um, a, uh, the explanation that some economists have offered for U.S. firms increasing adoption of automation technology may be based on an overestimation of the tax benefits and productivity gains associated with that technology. So strong words, overestimation. That is meaning that, that they basically means that something is wrong. So we're overestimating the productivity gains? Yes, that part's true. They say the productivity gains are unremarkable. Remember, that's important. But what about the tax benefits? Right, so if we dumb summarize this choice, this is saying uh, taxes equal the productivity, right? That they're both bad. But the passage is making a kind of comparison and saying one is better than the other. So this is equating them and that's not the same thing, right? So this math equation strategy might have some legs here. Let's see. Uh, B, U.S. firms' increasing adoption of automation technology may be driven more by the fact, so more, by the fact that the government indirectly incentivizes firms to adopt that technology than by the ongoing benefits that the technology has for firms' outputs. So there's, uh, they're, not, they're not saying productivity, and they're not saying taxes, and I know that for many of you, that's like, okay, well, then that's wrong. It doesn't mention the things it's supposed to mention. But for me, that's actually probably a sign that it's right because there's a lot of times where the SAT does this, where they, instead of naming the same things that they said in the passage, they find some backdoor way to talk about them, right? They, they find some other words to do it so that we're less likely to pick the choice. So if you don't understand what's going on here, you can't eliminate this choice because I know you understand this word here, more. And that matches with our inequality symbol that we have in our dumb summary. So we got we to gotta follow that and at least keep this in. Let's look at the others 
Maybe it won't matter. C. Changes to the U.S. tax code that result in capital expenditures on automation technology being treated the same as expenditures on labor costs would likely have little effect on firms' productivity, but may encourage further adoption of that technology. So here's my issue. They didn't really say anything about the productivity going up or down, right? We're not talking about it being uh, like being increased by something or decreased by something. They were basically just saying there's a, there is a, an increase in productivity, but it's not very good. They're not saying how we can make it better, how we can make it worse. That ha- didn't happen in the passage. So there's, this is definitely a confusing choice, but I, I'm not getting that kind of like more that I want that I got in choice B, right? I mean, we can look at it a little bit more deeply. Um, again, we got that the same, the same, right? They're kind of saying that maybe the capital, the taxes stuff is the same as the labor costs. I don't love that, right? So I am maybe confused here, but I, I kind of like B more still. It's, it seems to be making a bit more of that comparison. Let's look at D. U.S. firms have actually tended to experience a decrease in productivity, no, 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 as a result of adopting automation technology, but that decrease is overlooked due to the tax advantages associated with the technology. Well, there definitely are tax advantages, but they don't say, again, they're not saying there's a decrease in productivity. They're just saying that that whatever the increase in productivity was, it was um, unremarkable, right? So um, yeah, the gains are unremarkable. So that's not the same as saying it goes down. So I think a, a pretty good job on this question requiring not too much understanding of what's going on should get you down to B and C. And I'm hoping that you're feeling a little bit better about B and you pick it. And that is the answer. And to kind of get into why, we can look at some of these other words in B and really connect it back to our dumb summary very easily. Uh, let's look at the word, uh, the fact that the government indirectly incentivizes firms to adopt that technology. So incentivize, an incentive is like um, something that you offer to kind of get people to do what you want, right? So the government might offer a tax break saying, hey, you know, make this change and you'll save money in the long run because of that. And so that is what this crazy part of the passage that we didn't really understand is about. They talk about the tax code. um, They talk about it uh, it, it being an asset. um, It reduces the tax burden. Um, meaning that the government has made it like profitable to hire robots instead of people. That's kind of what that whole part is saying. And um, this part is is reiterating that, that the government has made a choice to incentivize automation, to, to make that better. And it's not because of the productivity, it's because of the tax breaks. Then we can go to the other part, uh, then by ongoing benefits that the technology has for firms' outputs. Well, this is a direct synonym. What is an output? Output is productivity. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. The other part is a little bit more twisted, but here it's a dead-on synonym. They, they could have just used the word productivity. Why didn't they? Well, because then it would be easier. So uh, this gets to something I say in a lot of my videos and I, I talk about in my lessons a lot, is basically when we're looking to analyze choices trying to notice what's in a passage, it's in our interest to focus less on nouns and more on verbs and adjectives, right? Less on the things that we're talking about and more on the descriptions of those things. What do they do? What happens to them? What are they like? Those descriptions are usually much more important. And it's because the nouns are going to change. They'll use some very specific phrase in the passage and then they'll change it up for the choice that you can't make the connection. Or they'll take the same weird phrase from the passage and paste it in a wrong answer to lure you in. So if you become dependent on the nouns, you're gonna fall for traps and you're gonna miss a lot of right answers. But if you think more about the descriptions about what's happening, you'll notice words like the ones that I kind of highlighted here, right? It complicated this account. That's a very powerful verb, right? Complicate, make something worse. Uh, we talked about it being unremarkable, right? So anytime I highlighted a noun there, I was highlighting a, a, a verb or an adjective to go with it. And, and so notice that this summary here is also more about just it's describing money in some way. So uh, I hope that's helpful. This is still a very hard question, 
But I loved this dumb summary. I think this really captured it. It gives me a, a lot of um, really good things to kind of think about as I go through these choices. It keeps me focused. And it's a great example of why I would use my scratch paper on reading because this is a complicated passage. There's a lot of ideas to hold in my head. But if I write a simple one down on the page, it keeps me focused. It prevents me from forgetting what I'm looking for. And it frees up space in my brain to sort through all this other stuff. So use the scratch paper when things get hard. It helps.